Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 30th of January. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new updates. As always, I do have the chapters in the description below, or you can kind of click on the chapters at the bottom of the screen. New videos this week. I did a video all about the new Azure AD custom security attributes. These are attributes I can add to Azure AD users, service principles, managed identities, and then very granularly controllable who can set values, who can see them. Then I can also use those values, not just to store data, but then actually use it to control access to other resources with attribute-based attribute access control. So actually, very, very cool. Then I did a video all about using proximity placement groups. Really, what makes them tick underneath and what is the right way to use them? New features this week. On the networking side, Azure Firewall Premium SKU now has 100, and gig, 100 gigabit per second new performance boost max speed. So there's this new preview feature that lets me do this performance boost. It's using certain acceleration features of the virtual machine, the networking, to now go up to this 100 gigabits per second. On the storage side, so Azure NetApp Files has a number of new features that have gone GA. Remember, Azure NetApp Files is an Azure first party service that's built on NetApp hardware. It provides very, very high performance options that integrates into your virtual network. And I can access those using SMB and NFS. So now it has dual protocol NFS and SMB volume. So a single volume I create, I could use SMB 4.1 and SMB, or I could also use the NFS 3 and SMB, but I can use both NFS and SMB to the same volume. It also now supports LDAP over TLS. So there are a number of features when I use NetApp that requires communication to domain controllers, and it uses LDAP for that. I can think about SMB volumes. I want NFS 4.1 Kerberos, so I get encryption over the wire using Kerberos. And now with that communication to the domain controllers, those LDAP communications can be encrypted with TLS over the wire. Also now SMB3 protocol encryption. So now the client has to support SMB3 encryption, but providing it does, and I've turned on that SMB3 encryption on the volume, I'm gonna get that SMB3 based encryption. There are new regions, a new region replication pair. So new regions like East Asia, Switzerland, North, Switzerland, West, and West US 3. And the way NetApp works is I can set up replication, but it has to be within the pairs. Now it's not the same pairs that Azure uses. They have a whole bunch of different pairs. We can actually jump over and look at these quickly and they update this document. But basically I can go and look at the supported cross-region replica pairs, and you can see, hey, all of these different pairs. So if I'm using Azure NetApp files, I can replicate between all these various combinations of pairs. So now there are some new ones added that I can leverage as part of everything I'm doing there. They did also add in preview the ability to restore a single file from a snapshot instead of the entire volume. And you can now actually convert between the NFS protocol versions from NFS 3 to NFS 4.1 and back to 3 again. So they added that capability in preview. Carrying on, on the database side, so Azure Database for MySQL Flexible has new region support. Remember, we're seeing a lot of announcements around the flexible SKUs of the Azure Managed Database. The whole point of the flexible is they're built on virtual machines, so we can stop and start them. We can use those burstable SKUs of virtual machines. I can have control over the scheduled maintenance. They have availability zones, support both a high availability within a zone or zone redundant and I had that optional replica support. So now China East 2 and China North 2 now have support for MySQL Flexible. Miscellaneous. So 
Azure Site Recovery now has zone redundant storage support in GA. So zone redundant storage, remember the three copies we have of our data, those three copies are spread over three availability zones within the region. Well, now if I have a virtual machine using zone redundant disks, Azure Site Recovery now supports it, it will replicate it to my target region. In the target region, it will also use a ZRS protected disk where I get the equivalent level of protection. A whole set of Azure backup features went GA. This is probably one of the most useful ones when I think about protecting myself from some kind of ransomware or attack. And it's this multi-user authorization. The idea is that now, even if my credential is compromised and I own the backup vault, I could not go and delete the backup vault anymore. The process is we have this new construct called a resource guard. And that provides protection when I try and do some critical operation like delete the vault or turn off some protection. Now that resource guard can actually be in a different subscription, even a different tenant. So the whole point is I'm separating from some kind of attack that might compromise my data. Now what will happen is I create this resource guard in that other subscription, that other tenant. The backup admin will enable that resource guard on the backup vault. Once that's enabled, for me as the backup admin to now perform a critical operation on the backup vault, the security admin, a different role, has to go and temporarily grant me an elevated permission on the resource guard so that now I can perform that critical operation but only for a short amount of time and then I lose that permission again. So it gives protection that if I have some heightened permissions and my account is compromised, hey, it stops me from maybe accidental or malicious uh, impact on my data. Carrying on from those kind of protection ideas, there's now an unregistration block for a protected server. So that's again, protecting against an accidental or malicious, malicious deletion of a server. So if I still have associated backup items, if there's data in a soft delete state, I will not be able to go ahead and remove that server. I can't, won't be able to unregister it. Now you get free retention for soft delete data. So if I have data in that soft delete state, I'm not paid for the capacity that it's actually using. And now there's a no soft delete data loss. So what I can now do is, if I had a backup policy, what it will do is it will not go and delete the data if it's in that soft delete state. So it will give me protection even from kind of those backup policies that I may have in effect so I won't lose data. Private endpoint support for the Azure Monitor agent is now in preview. So remember the Azure Monitor agent is the new agent that's replacing the old Log Analytics agent, the old Diagnostics extension, and the Telegraph agent we used for Linux. So all of those capabilities roll up into the new Azure Monitor agent. But it didn't have support for the Azure Monitor Private Link Scope, the AMPLS. That's what lets me actually use Azure Monitor through private endpoints. Well, now in preview, we have that private endpoint support for the new Azure Monitor agent. It uses this new data collection endpoint to configure ingestion settings for the targeted machines for that data collection endpoint. And then I associate that with my AMPLS all of the various entries will get added to my private DNS zone, but now those AMAs will be able to use private endpoints for my protected um, Azure Monitor Log Analytics environments. There is a new cost analysis experience. They basically added tabs. If you were ever using cost analysis and you try to jump around different areas, you could kind of lose your progress. So what they've done now is they give you this tabbed experience. If we jump over and take a look at this, let's go and have a look. So let me just quickly close this down. So I'm in cost management and billing. I've gone to cost analysis and then cost analysis preview. And you can see now by default, we just get a tab. And then there's this add tab button. So I could be in a tab and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna start looking at resources and costs and things associated with that but I don't wanna lose the current progress or the settings I've done. 
I want to go and add another tab. On this one, let's go and look at services. And I might change different elements of what I'm looking at, etc. But I can jump between them. So now I have this nice tab experience. Let's just make it easier for me to not lose the status of exactly what I'm doing. And then finally, in terms of updates, um, Azure Key Vault has increased their quotas. So there's certain limits around interactions when I use Azure Key Vault. For example, there was a 2000 um, Git transaction limit every 10 seconds. They've doubled it up to 4000. You should check out the document. It's in the description below for all of the different limits. But basically, they've increased the number of them. So I can do more, more types of interactions. And that was it. That was this week's update. As always, I hope this was useful. And uh, until next week and the next video, take care.